knows what their score is by now. Um, if not, they're posted on Blackboard, okay? Um, the average for the exam was uh, not bad. It was uh, six, about, so for the in-class people was a 62 and a half, and for the online people was a 63. That's about the, where you think the average is going to be. There were uh, four people that got hundreds on the exam. So it wasn't impossible, right? Uh, this is like the sixth time I've taught this class, and uh, it's nothing different than I've given anybody else previously. So I can guarantee you that um, from previous classes also it wasn't impossible. There were many, many people that got A's, and many, many people that got B's, many more. <laughs> and many that, many that got C's, too. So if you think it's impossible already, I can assure you that it's not. The other thing I want to say is recall that um, my policy is just for this eventuality because most people at this point um, have underestimated the class before they took exam one and now they want to get their scores back to be even higher. My policy is um, at the final, if you get a better grade than any of your previous three exams, uh, you can replace that grade with the final grade. Okay, so if you got like a 10 or 20 or something on this exam, and you get 100 on the final, then you get 100 on exam one. Okay, so you're not in any dire straits. Okay, so uh, everybody should have their exam grade already. Um, I posted the online people in Blackboard, um, but and for those of you who are here, of course, everybody's still enrolled in the class. You can see how many people actually care about the class. So this is probably what's going to happen. You're going to see your grades go up. Um, the problem is, is that a lot of people have now dropped the class, so the average is also going to go up, okay? So uh, the average and the high scores are what I set my curve by. So again, you're just going to have to study harder if you feel you got a grade that you didn't want, okay? But if you're happy with the grade that you got, then <coughs> studying in the way and um, the amount that you've been studying. Um, you could probably be honest with yourself, ask yourself how much you have studied, and go back to that first quiz and see if you um, lied to yourself or to me, okay? Um, anyways, and if you have been studying 10 hours a week and still aren't getting it, then I suggest you just start studying more, okay? Because this is not an easy class. Anyways, the keys for the exams are here and here. Uh, so I gave two different exams. Um, there are plenty of blank copies of the two exams if you want to take one of those home with you and try it on your own some more. Uh, of course, the keys are also online, okay? So again, the average was about a 63 for both classes, a pretty good average. There were a lot of low scores and a lot of high scores. So there was um, kind of two uh, umps of people, people that got hundreds, nineties, uh, and high eighties, and um, people that got forties, thirties, and fifties, okay? So very little in between. If you're in the latter section, you should probably get in here. Anyways, I'll give the exams back about 10 minutes left in class, okay? So um, anyways, let's uh, start talking about chapter five, chemical reactions. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start talking about is the chemical equation. Uh, a chemical equation is a shorthand notation of a chemical reaction. Um, I could describe to you a chemical reaction in words, like I could say hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas goes to water. Okay, but um, if I describe it to you in that way, of course, you need to translate it from English to chemistry, if you will, okay? So the first thing you would have to do is realize that hydrogen gas, of course, is diatomic in its elemental um, form. So you would have to say, okay, that must be H2, hydrogen gas. Um, the next thing you would do, and so we're gonna write the chemical equation for this one. You would put the uh, state of matter behind uh, the chemical symbol or the molecular symbol for hydrogen gas. So H2 is hydrogen. G uh, signifies that it's a gas. Okay. 
And then if we looked at oxygen, well, we would have to remember oxygen was also a diatomic element, okay? And it was a gas, too. I said, like, oxygen gas goes to water. Okay? We have to remember water's formula, H2O. Of course, and in this case, it would be a gas because it would get so hot. Okay, there are other things uh, about the chemical equation that we... Um, are going to have to uh, do to make it uh, correct uh, in describing what we're actually talking about. Of course, the next thing would be to balance the chemical equation. We're going to learn about all of this stuff in a little bit. But anyways, the thing you would do is ask, do I have the same amount of atoms on both sides? So first I would say, do I have the same amount of hydrogen atoms? Well, I've got two here and two here, so that's the same. Well, what about oxygen atoms? I've got two here, but only one here. Okay, so I'm going to have to do something to this side. In this case, put a coefficient of a two there. And now if I look, I've got two oxygen atoms here, two oxygen atoms there. But unfortunately, now I've changed my number of hydrogen atoms to this, to four. I've only got two here, so I need to put a coefficient of a two there, giving me four. Okay, so I've balanced that chemical equation. Um, you may have some experience with this if you've already gone a little further in how, um, but you may not. And what we're going to do today and uh, for the next couple of lectures is try to uh, understand all of what I just did, okay, in that um, example. Okay, so let's talk about this chemical equation. It's the shorthand notation of a chemical reaction. Shorthand being, meaning that it only takes a few strokes of the pen to describe exactly what I mean, okay? So it describes all of the substances that react and all of the products that form, their physical states, and experimental conditions. In this case, we didn't put any experimental conditions, um, but let's look at all of these different components to the chemical equation. So the first is going to be the reactants. These are substances that undergo the change in the reaction. We find the reactions on the left side of the reaction. So in this case, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas are the reactants. Um, the products are the substances produced by the reaction. So in this case, it's going to be the things on the right side. So we write chemical equations just like we write um, sentences from left to right, okay? So going from left to right describes your kind of like timeline, okay? This is point zero and this is point N, okay? So this is like when you start the thing, this is when you finish. This thing here, this arrow, <laughs> designates the reaction, okay? So this is what you started with, then it reacted, then you get your product. Um, let's look. Okay, so reactants are substances on the left. Uh, when two or more reactants are involved in a chemical equation, we have a plus sign between them. Okay? This plus sign doesn't mean it's an ion, a water ion. Okay, It means, or hydrogen ion, it just means this reacted with this. Okay, So you got to watch when you have that plus sign that you don't put it in the wrong place and start to uh, mislabel it as what it's not. Again, uh, products are on the right side. If there were two products to this reaction, we would also have separated those by a uh, plus sign. Okay, um, in this, so the products in the reaction must be specified by chemical symbols. Notice I didn't write the word hydrogen up here. I didn't write. I wrote what it looks like in its elemental form. Okay. Uh, so they must be specified using its chemical symbols. Reactants on the left of the ar uh, arrow, right, uh, is the product. Notice again here we've got a positive sign or a plus sign separating the products. Uh, the physical states are shown in parentheses. In this case, you've got a solid, uh, mercury 2 oxide, this is a solid. Um, 
mercury is a liquid, and oxygen is a gas. This, where this little delta there, that's capital delta, as opposed to the little delta that we've been, uh, that's just a triangle. So that delta just means that you need to elevate the heat. Okay? So if you see that little thing, think of it like a campfire or whatever. It's putting heat into this reaction. And again, notice that it's written above the arrow. Okay, so these reaction equations don't always represent reactions. So these chemical equations don't always represent reactions. They can also represent a physical change. Okay, so notice here we've got sugar, which is a solid in this little piece in here. And then we've got water, which is a liquid in the beaker here. And when we mix those two things up, we form a solution. So they're just intermingled. They're not reacting with each other. Okay, so this is... Um, kind of a sugar water thing, okay? So what we do is change the state to aqueous, in this case, um, designating that the things aren't reacting, but they're just found in solution, okay? So not only do these chemical equations represent reactions, but they can represent physical changes as well. So balancing a chemical equation, that's what we did up here with this equation. So a balanced chemical equation is one in which the number of atoms of each element in the reactants is equal to the number of atoms of the same element in the product. Okay, let's just go back and confirm that this reaction is balanced. So we got two atoms of hydrogen, but we've got two times those two atoms, right? So there's going to be four hydrogens there. If we look over here, water has two atoms of hydrogen in it, and we've got two water molecules, so there's going to be four hydrogens there. Go back to over here, two oxygens, so these oxygen molecules got two oxygens in it, and here we've got two oxygens as well, because each water molecule has one, and we've got two water molecules. Okay? So we've got to balance the equation. The reason we have to balance the equation or there, there, there's a number of reasons. It makes our lives a lot easier when we um, start doing uh, calculations using the chemical equation. But um, the physical reason why we have to do this is so we can obey the law of conservation of matter. If you recall what we were talking about when we talked about the law of conservation of matter is that matter can't be created or destroyed uh, in any chemical or physical process. So in the, if that's the case, then we have to have the exact same number of atoms on the left and on the right. Okay, So that's why we balance the equation. And again, it'll make your lives much easier when you say, well, if I have 0.656 moles of hydrogen gas, how many moles of water do I need? Okay? If you don't have it balanced, you can't do that problem. Uh, in this case, it's a gas. Or in this case, it's a gas. In this case, it's a liquid. I don't think you need to bog yourself down about that. Uh, it's just depending on what temperature you do the reaction at. Of course, at, uh, above 100 degrees Celsius, water is a gas, but below, it's a liquid. So they must have done this reaction up there at below 100 degrees Celsius. And I did my reaction here at above 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? So you got to remember that molecules can change physical states. So it all depends on what how much energy you're pumping into the system, okay? So don't bog yourself down about that. It'll tell you what it is on each um, chemical equation. So these things that we put in front, these numbers that we put in front of these molecules here, um, they're known as coefficients. And what they represent here, so let's just go back to our chemical equation. 
So what does this represent? This represents, well, we got one, two hydrogen molecules that react with one oxygen molecule, right, to form two water molecules. Okay? So that's exactly what this is saying. It's the same thing as saying, of course, you know, like if I have two of these, they react with one and form two, right? <coughs> but if I have two moles of this, it reacts with one mole and forms two moles, okay? Because remember, a mole is just a number, like a dozen. So if I had two dozen of these, that would react with one dozen of these, forming two dozen of these, okay? So if I had 0.5 of these, right, 0.5 moles of this, then this would be 0.25, this would be 0.5, okay? So um, you can do that through uh, the chemical analysis or the uh, molar and um, moles and multiply that by the molecular weight or divide it by the molecular weight will give you the number of grams. You're going to do all of those calculations uh, with balanced chemical equations. So again, uh, we talked about the law of conservation of matter. Matter can't be gained or lost in the process of a chemical reaction. Therefore, the total mass of the left side and the right side have to be equivalent. And the coefficients are what you use to do that. Heat, energy, yeah. Heat and energy are the same thing. Okay. Um, so, uh, like we were saying, the chemical equation shows also the molar quantity of reactants. It doesn't all only show the individual particles that are reacting. It shows the molar quantity, just like what we just said. Um, so it's the relative number of moles of each product in reactants is indicated by placing this coefficient in front of it. So I have a relative number of two moles of mercury two oxide that form relative two mercury to one oxygen. If there's no coefficient in front of the molecule in the chemical equation, then it's um, understood to be one. Okay. So here's a chemical equation uh, that is unbalanced. Let's go ahead and try to balance it. Okay. Right
go over to that side and balance it. So we got how many oxygens all together do we have? So we got four plus six, right, is ten. Okay. So and how many do we have here? Two. Two. So we're gonna have to put a five there. Okay. So make sure you add up both the six that's here and the four that's there. So bad. Let's try. Let's try a different one. That might be a little bit harder. Um, so instead of C3H8, let's do C4H10. So for all of those of you who are confused about this, we're about to do one more. So let's do it together. Okay. Remember, you want to balance C. Then H, then O. Okay? And remember, this is different than what was up there. So balance C, then H, then O. If you've got just those um, atoms in the reaction equation, and in this case you do. So the first thing you're going to balance is C. You got four here and only one here, right? So you're going to put a four there. Okay? Everybody got that far. What about hydrogen? You got ten here. You got two there, so what are you going to put here? Five. And then what did I tell you? You got to go to the right side of the equation, figure out how many oxygens you've got. Okay, so you, how many do you have? Five times one is five. Four times two, right, is eight. The whole equals thirteen. Okay, so how many do I need to put here? What do I do now? Uh, can you use a decimal? Can you have half of an oxygen molecule? No. So this is why I wanted to do this, this problem, okay? So what you're going to do is actually, uh, you can put, you can start with the decimal, right? So 13 divided by 5, right? Uh, that's going to give you, sorry. divided by 2, or 7.5, would give you the right amount, right? So what you're going to have to do, since you can't have that 13 divided by 2, you're going to have to multiply all of it by 2, okay? So if I got 13 divided by 2 here, I got 1 here, it's going to multiply the whole thing by 2. So when I do that, 2 times 1 is 2, right? 2 times 13 over 2 is 13. 13, right? Two, times, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So 2 times 4 is 8. And 2 times 5 is 10. Okay? And now is that a balanced equation? It should be, right? Yeah. Why can't you multiply by 2 again? Okay, because we had a fraction here, right? 13 divided by 2. Okay, but we can't have half of a molecule, right? It's, it's like saying, okay, this is in this is in our our reaction, but we want to cut it in half. That doesn't make any sense, okay? So you can't do that. So it was the coefficients were one, thirteen over two, four, and five, right? So since we can't have this one, we got to multiply a whole thing by two. So watch out with those types of reactions. I can only imagine something like that would be on the test. Um, there's uh, that first reaction that we balanced, doing it in the same fashion that we did this one. Okay. What I'd like you guys to do on your own is um, balance these equations. And then if you have any problems with any of them, let me know. Come to office hours, let me know, and we'll balance them together. Okay, so we discussed this already, but um, this table really does, this table isn't in your book, unfortunately, but it really does emphasize what kind of information the chemical equation is actually telling us, okay? So it's telling us a lot of information, um, even though you know, it's not 
always so obvious or right apparent in the, when looking at the chemical equation. Of course, it's telling us in this equation here, it's saying two molecules of this, this butane stuff, so if you ever lit a cigarette lighter, this is the uh, chemical equation that you'd use, okay? Um, two of these molecules react with 13 of these molecules to form eight of these molecules and 10 of these molecules. That's what that says. Okay, that's probably the most obvious thing that it's telling us, okay? Um, and that's kind of described pictorially up here, although for a different reaction. But also, we can think about moles, because these are the relative amounts of things. So, for every two moles of this, we need 13 moles of this to react, and eight moles of this will be formed, and 10 moles of this will be formed, okay? So that's also what it's telling us. Um, and that might seem obvious to you, too. But it's also telling us that the total weight over here is equal to the total weight over here. So for this equation up here, it says, well, the total mass is 204.09 grams on this side. Well, it better be 204.09 grams on this side, the molar mass, that is. Um, if we're looking at AMUs, it's got to be 204.09 AMUs on this side, 204.09 AMUs on this side. And notice, you can figure out the masses. Remember, converting AMU to mass, um, a lot of you had trouble with that on the test. I would suggest that you make sure you guys know how to do that because it's going to be just coming back and coming back and coming back. So if you weren't able to convert from moles to grams, AMUs to moles, it's all that's all going to be the rest of the class, okay? So you just got to figure it out. You got to figure it out. But uh, the chemical equation can tell you all of that information. And with those three simple... Uh, three simple figures, right, you can get um, even more and more and more information about these sort of reactions. Okay, so we're going to talk about a series of reactions. Um, the first reaction we're going to talk about is um, a type of reaction. It's called a redox reaction. And it's the combination of two words, this word redox. It means uh, it's squished together these two words, reduction and oxidation. Um, and we're going to learn about oxidation numbers, and they really provide kind of a convenient way to keep track of which um, molecules are reacting in what way. Okay? So let's go ahead and erase. Can I erase this equation? Everybody's got it. going to be, so there's all of these other ways to look at it. Um, I really think this is the easiest way to uh, keep it straight. Another, another uh, couple set of acronyms is oil rig, but um, it's kind of more appropriate for the area that we're in, but um, it doesn't, I don't know, oil is, oxidation is losing, so it doesn't really describe the electric. I think this Leo the Lion says Gur might be the best way to think about it. Okay, so if we look at this reaction.
reaction up here. This is an oxidation reduction reaction. Any oxidation reduction reaction um, deals with the transfer of some amount of electrons from one species to another. Okay? In this case, zinc as its elemental form, anything in its elemental form, let's look at a few things that may be in their elemental form. Zinc solid, that's in its elemental form. Its oxidation number will be zero. Anything in its elemental form will be zero. Okay, like fluorine gas, right? That's going to be Cl2 gas. Okay? That's also zero oxidation state. Okay? The oxidation number can be either zero or a negative number or a positive number. Okay? If it's a negative number or a positive number, it will equal the charge of that ion. Okay? So, for group one elements, what's the um, common charge that a group one element will attain when doing a reaction? Positive one. Positive one. So that's the oxidation state for all group one elements. Okay? So oxidation state and ionic charge are kind of, uh, what do you say, interchangeable terms. Okay? So if we look at group two elements, what's the most common uh, number for those? Plus two. That's going to be their oxidation state. Okay? Normally, these group sevens will be negative one. So that'll normally be their oxidation state, although um, every once in a while you'll see them with different oxidation states. Um, and then these guys would normally be negative two, these will normally be negative three, but occasionally the nonmetals have very strange oxidation states. But we'll figure it all out, don't worry. So if we look at these two reactants up here, what's the oxidation state of copper here? In this, in this reaction here? Two plus. How did you figure that out? Because it looked at it and it said two plus next to it, right? So what's the oxidation state of zinc here? Zero. How'd you figure that out? Yeah, because it's in its elemental state is what you want to think about. Okay? So, what happened here? How many um, electrons is this missing here? Two electrons. What happened from here to here? What did it do? It must have gained those two electrons, right? Because it went from oxidation state what? Here. Two plus to oxidation state what? Here. Zero. So, how do you get from two plus to zero? You have to get two negative charges, right? For every one negative charge, you can assume that's one electron. Okay, so it's gained two electrons. What happened to zinc here? So it went from a what oxidation state? Zero, Zero to over here? Two plus. So what did it do? It, lose, it lost electrons, right? It must have, right? Because if you lose negative charge, you gain positive. Okay, so which one of these things got oxidized and which one got reduced? Which one got oxidized? So which lost electrons? Did copper lose electrons? No. Uh-uh. Zinc lost electrons. How do you know that? When you look at the oxidation state, it'll tell you, right? It, in fact, lost two electrons, right? What about copper? What did it get, reduced or oxidized? Copper did what? Now gained electrons. Okay? So remember, Leo the lion says grr, right? Okay? So if it gained electrons, what happened? It got reduced, right? Okay? So you got to remember this in relation to oxidation numbers. Okay, that's a, that was a crash course in oxidation numbers. We're going to go over it quite extensively. So what's happened here in this case is this zinc atom transfer two electrons to the copper two plus here, forming these two products, okay? This is a redox reaction because you have that transfer of electrons. So here are the rules you want to remember for oxidation numbers. Any uncombined elements, oxidation state is zero. Just like what we said here. Zinc in its 
elemental form is zero. Fluorine in its elemental form is zero. If I had H2, is that the common elemental form for hydrogen? H2? And everybody should be like screaming at me, yes, right? If you don't know that, it's something you need to know, okay? You need to know that. So this elemental form, uh, so it's going to be oxidation state zero. Okay? So most of the elements are just going to be kind of like zinc here, where it's not a diatomic element. Okay, So all the metals will be that way. So it's just the non-metals you got to worry about. So a uh, simple ion, like what we were saying, group ones are positive one, group twos are positive two, uh, group seven A's are usually negative one, usually negative two, and so on. Okay. For example, magnesium two plus is going to be two plus oxidation state. Oxygen two minus is going to be a two minus oxidation state, and chlorine minus is going to be a minus one oxidation state. Um, so when they're in compounds, group one and group two will always be plus one and plus two. Um, hydrogen in a compound will always be plus one. Okay. Um, so this starts to give you weird uh, oxidation numbers. We'll do this H2SO4 and figure out what the oxidation number for sulfur is in that. Okay. But the um, another rule I want you to remember is the oxidation number for oxygen is always negative two. Okay. So oxygen's the one that doesn't change, um, except in peroxides. Uh, we won't see any peroxides in this class. You might see them in some of the owl assignments, but not in any of the tests, okay? Um, so the last thing you want to remember is the oxidation numbers in of all the atoms in a compound equals zero, okay? Um, so let's go back to H2SO4 and figure out the oxidation numbers now that we know all these rules. So if I give you a compound like H2SO4, you should be able to figure out what the overall oxidation numbers of each of these atoms are. So the first thing you want to remember is that the overall oxidation combined should be zero. Um, you also want to remember in compounds, hydrogen is always plus one. Okay? So how many hydrogens do we have in this compound? Two. two. So it's going to be two times plus one. Okay? We're going to add that to something, whatever sulfur is, because we don't know yet. Okay? But oxygen is always going to be what? Two minus. Two minus. Two minus. So how many oxygens do we have? Four. Four, right? So it's going to be four times two minus. Okay? So what is this number altogether? Negative eight, right? Everybody agrees with me, hopefully. What's this number altogether? Two. two. So two plus what minus eight equals zero? It must be six, right? Six. Is that right? So for those of you who are confused, this is just addition, right? We're not doing anything real special, okay? So it's going to be 6 because 2 plus 6 equals 8. 8 minus 8 equals 0, okay? So normally you would expect the sulfur atom to have a negative 2 oxidation state, right? But in this compound, sulfur's oxidation state is actually um, plus 6. Okay. So you gotta watch watch out for this. The non-metals will do this. Oxygen won't do this because oxygen is always minus two. Hydrogen won't do this, it's always plus one. But all the other non-metals you gotta watch out for. Okay? So you always want to do your hydrogens and your oxygens first whenever you're uh, trying to figure out um, the oxidation number of a compound. Okay? Uh, let's stop there for today and hand back the test. Um, so please don't leave before you get your test back. Um, and we will
pick up with.